Hello, rolling over there. I'm... Balling over here? Balling over here. Yeah, <laughs> this one. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Good start. <laughs> Isn't she great? We haven't done a video in so long. We're a little bit nervous to like be together on camera. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hey, in today's video, we're going to cover a much requested topic that we've received asks for in Instagram, in YouTube comments, and today we're going to talk about tea processing terminology, especially the ones that tend to be confusing and get thrown around all through in all kinds of different contexts. So we're going to try and clear those up for you today. Yes. The reason we want to do such a video is because often I got asked about the tea process, uh, like somebody would approach me and ask, somebody would approach me. Yeah, just a stranger on the street, <laughs> just before he asked for all her money. No. <laughs> on tea festivals, uh, there are people who ask me about uh, what is boiling or what is rolling, which for me is like, uh, I would need a little bit of clarification. Yeah, like, because, what do you mean by rolling? Yes, because sometimes uh, there are confusions in tea terms that are we're not even recognized by people. That's right. So we're going to clear all of those up today. So before we get started, don't forget to uh, subscribe to our channel down below and click that notification bell so you'll be the first to know whenever we, re whenever we release a new video. If you're interested in today's topic, just keep on watching. While we talk about some tea terms, I'm going to brew up some uh, aged green tea that Phil found in our tea closet. Yeah, it's always a big discussion when it's like, well, what are we going to brew while we have the video? Actually, every time we have tea, that's a pretty big discussion. So the job was given to me to, to go and find something. What was the word you used? Something uh, imaginative or surprise me, something like that. So I went digging in the bottom of our tea closet into our sample box, and I found an old bag of the original uh, Gucci Sassoon exclusive that we had when we first started up. So we're going to try that today. Still pretty sweet though. Yeah, and see how it's done. I mean, it's an, it was an exquisitely processed tea, so we'll see, how it, we'll see how it did. And we're both dying of thirst, so it'll be perfect. Still a little bit nutty. Mm. Hey, that's actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to have plenty of nuttiness as it opens up. The water is not boiling, it sits there for a bit, so that's it's right. probably 90, 85 ish, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the most. Hmm. Oh, that's a great tea. Oh, way better than I thought. I was a little bit nervous. <laughs> oh, I'm happy. While I was preparing for this video, I actually did some Google search uh, on tea processing charts to see what's out there and how people are uh, interpreting and uh, translating the um, tea terms. So you could see like Baking, roasting. Right, uh, just a crazy array of charts and graphs. I know, I know, very complicated. One of them looked uh, like a rainbow. <laughs> uh, you know, and there's like a rolling, bowling, shaking, fixing. But among them, there is one that is pretty special because mm -hmm. almost all the terms are English except this one, which is barely English. Uh, it's Kill green, you probably guessed that one. Right, kill green. I remember when I first started getting into tea, back when we started, and um, I was like, kill green? So I asked, obviously I asked, well, what is kill green? What does that mean? Because uh, it doesn't make any sense just by itself. And then I, to my surprise, it was sort of the key step in making green tea. Well, why are you gonna kill the green if it's <laughs> green tea, right? I was so confused. So um, then, okay, it got to explain to me how, okay, the kill green is how we preserve the freshness in the tea and, uh, and actually keep it green. So it's a little bit counterintuitive to say the least. So I, but that's fine. Just go with it, right? And then I realized this is a step that occurs in 
other tea processes that aren't even green tea as well. Yes, like so yellow tea. Yellow puar. Puar dark yeah, tea. Yeah. Super confusing. So what the heck's going on with this kill green? Right, term? let's start with this term. Well, kill green is actually a literal translation from the Chinese term sha qing. So sha means kill, qing means green. But the qing in this case, in the tea making, is a, a character widely used to describe that uh, fresh leaf, like the not down tea leaves. So you could have turned like yao qing, like shaking. Surprisingly, they don't call that shaking green, but that's the Chinese. And, uh, you know, zuo uh, qing, lang qing, there are many tea process related words with this character qing in it. So, like you mentioned, that uh, there are yellow teas and uh, puar, they all have kill green, like green tea. So, how could they have uh, further uh, fermentation or right, oxidation? Well, oxidation, right. oxidation, right. So, the thing is, like, uh, you know, like how we cook meat. You cook that to it's fully done or rare, medium rare, same yeah. with the tea leaves. And you, you can control. And you have a whole spectrum in between. Yes. Yeah. The question I'm most afraid of to be asked is about rolling or shaping or balling, however you call it. And speaking of balling, this tea is balling, <laughs> but that's not what balling means. We'll get into that. Right. Yeah, when I first uh, started to learn tea terms again back in the beginning, uh, I remember uh, digging in on the whole rolling term, like what is this uh, rolling? Uh, why do you roll the tea? I didn't know what that meant at all. And, and then I you come to balling. Because the rolling feels like a roll into a ball. Yeah, and then I thought they were balling. similar, and then uh, rolling was kind of related to me to black tea, but you would also see it sometimes in oolong, and again, it was sort of a mixed up thing, and balling, is it, it and is balling actually making the shape, or is it... Yeah, sometimes people call that shaping. Yeah, so it just became uh, really confusing, and I guess, uh, yeah, so it... I also see oxidation, like, I see what the face they are trying to... Uh, referred to, like that uh, bruising, that uh, whole oxidizing right. phase they're trying to, but there are just uh, so many turns about it that are a little bit like uh, not sure exactly mm. what it's about. There's overlap, and that's uh, right. And my brain always wants to have one term means one thing, and it goes in this slot here, but it's really more continuous here. It's really like not so discreet and easy to, oh, that's rolling. It's yes. actually, yes. No. That's why when somebody asks me that, I would have to ask back, what exactly are you talking about? What's the step look like? Of course, I guess they asked me because they didn't know, but I need to know more. And I don't want to give somebody a big thesis, a big paper, like five minutes of talk about this process, right? So in terms of uh, um, how to say this steps or what to say, or what this step really mean? It really depends on the initial uh, translator. What, how he defines this step. Shaping, which is very general. And, um, you know, green tea has a shaping, make that into different shape. Like, uh, Longjin is a flat. Or Bilo Bilo Chun Chun is yeah. like a snail shape. Or, you know, uh, the ball shape of Wulong is also when doing that whole step is also shaping. So I feel like uh, it's very important to have some clarification which step you're talking to. But to me, I tend to keep the word shaping for green tea mm -hmm. because that uh, purpose of that step seems to be more uh, simple. It's really about to make that into shape. But when talk about uh, uh, black tea or oolong, like rolling, they, uh, especially like a black tea rolling, they make that into the long straight leaf shape. That's also shaping. So I would use the more like rolling for that circumstances. And uh, bowling, um, I understand as uh, in terms of making a bowl shaped oolong, like mm -hmm. Taiwanese oolong or Tie Guan Yin or Bai Ya Xi Lan into the bowl shape. That's when you do uh, a bunch of leaves into a big ball and press it. That's more of a bowling shape. It's extremely exhausting to do by hand. I tried it. <laughs> yes. Yes. And the least favorite way of calling some of those steps 
is、um, oxidation for me、mm-hmm. because oxidation happens during all those steps. If、mm-hmm. you talk about oxidation, it refers to too many possible steps.、Right. Basically, starts when the leaf is plucked and stops until doesn't stop till it's fixed. Yes. Another tea term that I often see, similar to oxidation, I'm not quite fond of, is、uh, drying, because fundamentally making、mm-hmm. tea is drying tea. Just have a complicated way to dry it. Right, right. Yeah. So, which often appears in the last few steps of making tea. Some people call that drying, which I don't like that term. You got roasting. Roasting, baking. Baking. Yep. Yes, baking. All your cooking terms. Fixing, yeah, fixing. I see fixing.、Mm. I also see fixing in green tea. Some people call kill green in the English version fixing.、Mm-hmm. So here we go. We have fixing that could mean roasting or、uh, baking. Finishing. Yeah, finishing, or it could mean kill green to some people. Okay, then let me ask you a question as a native speaker. Okay. So what's the difference between baking and roasting? Oh well, baking is. Ro- uh, you know what? You bake a cake and you roast a chicken. I don't even know, actually. Right. Like I was thinking, maybe there's a lid or something about the way the oven is, but I don't know.、Uh, They're all pretty high temperature heat. If there's any chefs in the audience who know the difference, leave a comment. I actually have no idea. Yeah. Except that you bake a cake. It is true. You bake a cake. You roast a chicken. Yeah. This is actually one of my、mm. most confusing、uh, point when trying to explain to people about、uh, that final. Uh, step, the final step, step. The final step. Like uh, uh, in early times, I tend to say baking because in Chinese we call that tan bei, and baking. So, so there's a, some like a sound similarity there. So I just、right. go straight for it, and、uh, then I feel like、uh, roasting is more like high,、uh, you know, the heat and、uh, remove the moisture. I feel like.、Uh, Because cake is moist, I don't know. I just switch to、uh, roasting later. Then, you know, when it comes to some delicate teas,、uh, I then because I start to notice that people have a, a an idea of what roasting should be. It should be smoky. It should be、mm-hmm. uh, really dark, uh, really. Yeah, you think of a charcoal, charcoal barbecue or.、Yes. Or、uh, like a an oven, like a roast chicken with golden brown、yes. skin, or a ham. Yes, but sometimes it's not what I wanted to say. It's more like a, a drying the you know do the laundry drying, but not roasting my clothes. But it's still with the heat, remove the moisture, but it's more gentle. Like when I was telling people about、uh, charcoal roasted white tea, which is a traditional. Sp- Step. It's not、mm-hmm. like heavy roasted, smoky white tea、okay. or any kind, <laughs> but it would be really like it's a it, little bit shocking. Yeah, to roasting doesn't seem to be the right word to use. I remember、yeah. my first encounter with roasting when I was shocked by it actually, and you can actually check out the video. We have a video about this when we did steaming,、uh, how to steam a tough pu'er, and <sighs> when we did the we did a sun dry and we did a roast, and that's when I realized how. Low the temperature is when we do a roast because、uh, that was a very low temperature roast. So yes, that was yes. my aha moment. And then later in China, I saw them roasting over very low temperature with the ashes and、yes. super. So roasting in English, I think you're right. I think for me, it does mean sort of a minimum of three twenty five degrees Fahrenheit, <laughs> about you know well, oven related, <laughs> oven related, high heat, smoky and boomy,、yeah. and it shouldn't have that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say, the misunderstanding around roasting is a lot. Like people think we Yan Cha are are high roasting tea, which is wrong. Actually,、mm. a good we Yan Cha are always low roasting. That unique profile of smoky, the char, the the mineral thing is not the high roasting. Right. It's actually very low roasting with some good teas.、Mm-hmm. And sometimes I think four or five. Right. Yeah. More, anyway, more than one. Yeah. So,、uh, please leave a comment below. What do you think? What do you think is a, a proper term to describe that kind of low temperature roasting, but more like close drying,、uh, kind of a step? Like, do you think baking is better, or maybe roasting covers that? It's just、uh, our misunderstanding that、yeah. uh, we didn't understand the word itself. 
well or is there a better word just comment below and let us know please all this talk of these confusing terms reminds me of a term that i was pretty confused about this spring when we were in china too uh, we were in fujian uh, traveling through oolong country and eventually up into white tea country and uh, all the time we're in oolong area we're sipping mao cha all the time and up until then i had thought mao cha was really related to puar i heard that from uh, somebody too right yes uh, Mao Cha, I think people is uh, more familiar with this term because the uh, Puar is getting pretty popular. Mm -hmm. But it's a very general term used to describe a, 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 almost a finished but not finished tea. Green tea, old times, also had Mao Cha. Now it is usually really fast to finish. Uh, Wulong definitely had Mao Cha. And uh, Mao kind of uh, this use of this word in here is a uh, uh, kind of refers to something that is is roughly in shape, almost there, but not quite done. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't describe the just after the kilgrim or just after the rolling the tea Mao Cha. It's not yet. You have to have a um, pretty much look like the finished dry leaf, but uh, still need to last a few steps like. Uh, roastings or uh, the final uh, drying or something. Yeah, it was awesome drinking it. Really hard on the tummy after a while, but really great to, uh, <laughs> well, that you drink it all the time. So much Mao Cha. Right. The purpose of making this video isn't to point out uh, those turns are wrong and you have to use my words for these steps. It's yeah. actually just trying to clear some confusions or the confusions that were not even recognized by people right. and uh, you know when we're asking the questions uh, or explaining uh, it's better that we become a little bit wordy and uh, mm -hmm. bring everybody on the same page so we're talking about the same thing first yeah absolutely I mean I remember when I was first getting into tea I really leaned on those charts which had all the processes kind of in neat little boxes step by step but um, you have to remember, those are very, very high level. They're just a guideline. I mean, just this spring when, uh, when we were in uh, Fujian, traveling to all the Oolong regions, I mean, we saw a Baya Tsilan compared to Taeguanyin compared to Wuyi. Each one of them could be a whole different process. They're so unique. I mean, the devil and the deliciousness is in the details. So. Yes. If you find this uh, video helpful, please give us a thumbs up. And leave with a comment below, like, what's your understanding about these T steps and T turns? Absolutely. And do you have better suggestions in terms of what are the words we could use to describe them? That would be really helpful. Yeah, we'd love to hear from you. And don't forget to uh, click that subscribe button. And right beside it, there's a little bell. If you want to be notified whenever we make a new video, click that as well. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, keep steeping. Oh, that's really good. That's got that really... Green, green flavor. Mm.